Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We have the lower right quadrant isolated for the preparation and restoration of a class one buccal pit on the lower first molar, number 30. As we think of the preoperative analysis for the preparation of this tooth, we want to look at the size of the carious lesion, and this is an initial lesion. Because of its size and what we judge to be the amount of caries that extends into the dentin, we'll be thinking of the fibrous cohesive foil as the restorative material. The fissure extends some millimeter and a half to two millimeters in a clusal cervical direction. As we probe the fissure and the pit at the base of that fissure, there is some slight catching of the explorer. Again, our judgment would be that there is minimal caries here. The outline form for this particular preparation will be probably somewhat ovoid in, in nature with the length of the ovoid being in the occlusal cervical direction. With this thought of the preoperative analysis then in, in mind, let's move on to the preparation. We have a our number one burr mounted in the air turbine. Uh, we will be utilizing uh, here the water spray uh, using the round burr in order that we can make the penetration uh, into Denton to establish the axial wall. We probably would need suction with uh, this. And as we penetrate now through the enamel, realizing that the enamel has a greater thickness to it at this occlusal area. So we have the penetration here and initial extension of the preparation. We have established then the axial wall depth and we see at this position the absence of caries. The extension of the preparation thus is going to be minimal. We will now stop with the use of the turbine because of the conservative nature of the preparation. We now have the number 55 burr in a uh, slow speed contraangle that will continue now the extension and the flattening of the axial wall. Thinking of the direction of enamel rods, of course, uh, with this. Paralleling the enamel rods and gaining an extension and cervically and, of course, occlusally. Same time remembering that the curvature of the axial wall places the axial wall deeper at a deeper position at the occlusal aspect because of the greater thickness of enamel. Well, we'll stop and look at this momentarily. We are into to Denton throughout. We'll move then into the change in burr to a 33 and a half. We've been using the 55 to again gain the extension and finishing of the enamel walls. The 33 and a half now for the placement of retention. And here the retention is going to be placed uh, peripherally, again with the inverted cone down at the base of the, the axial wall. Of 
across the distal wall, up at the occlusal, down the mesial wall, and then across the cervical. Uh, let's just dust that a bit more. Fine, and we're going to now really create a series of vantage points, uh, three areas essentially, one in the occlusal uh, area and then down in the two cervical positions to aid in the beginning of the cohesive foil. So just enhancing that retentive area a bit, that position down in a cervical mesial direction and then again in the cervical and distal direction. Then we'll move into the varnishing uh, of the preparation. Ideally, we would place the varnish uh, against the axial wall and against all the, the dentin uh, areas, just cleansing a little debris from this first and then place the, the bevel after the varnish has been uh, applied. This way, if varnish is gotten onto the cable surface margins, which indeed is going to occur with a preparation such as this, it's conservative, uh, that, that varnish can be removed then when the bevel uh, is placed. Now we'll move to a latch type contrangle and a round burr uh, fairly small in size. Let's just go to the next uh, larger than that. Round burr that essentially is going to, let's just test this with the preparation, essentially going to allow us to, to get into all of the areas, the curvatures of the outline form uh, to place a bevel which is essentially going to be about a half a millimeter in length and at an angle about 45 degrees. Again, this is a finishing bevel, bevel that's required of the, when the cohesive uh, fibrous foil is used. We'll start down in this cervical area, and here we're not going to be using air. Now I'm hitting at this moment both sides of the preparation mesial and distal walls and across the cervical floor or cervical cava surface margin. The bit of dust that is uh, formed from the debris, from the enamel removal, gives a definition of the, the cava surface bevel. It helps me determine the length and position of it. Now, this burr is really a little large to get into the occlusal aspect, so it will move into the smaller round burr in order to gain uh, the entrance to the occlusal portion in order to finish the bevel there. Again, if we have applied varnish, where varnish has gotten onto the preparation uh, cable surface margins, we're cleansing that this time with the use of the round plug finishing burrs. Again, it's the round plug finishing burrs that we are using. Now we'll have a little air to look at this. We come to a time now of close uh, scrutiny of the preparation. Looking, we have a greater depth of the axial wall in the occlusal area. There's regularity of outline form. There is a fissure uh, or a stained groove, really, rather than fissure that remains in this cervical area that is of no consequence. And we have retention form in the preparation. Just reviewing the completed preparation, the outline form that we see on this model is really one that shows more of a teardrop design. Again, outline form is really dictated by the extent of carries. We do see uh, here again the, the external outline form and a bevel around the periphery of the preparation. Within the preparation internally, there is circumferentially a retentive groove placed with the 33 and a half, and in each of the corners in this place, the vantage points that we have a place to enable us to start the foil more readily. 
looking at a cross-section view uh, of this. This is the type of retention that there is in the cervical area, the pointed retention from the inverted cone burr, uh, an axial wall really that is slightly deeper in the occlusal area, a curvature to that axial wall, and again the retention that is peripherally uh, here showing against the distal wall. As we look at the cable surface bevel, we see that it is placed in a manner so that a 45 degree angle of metal is formed at this cable surface margin of the restoration. Let's then look at the criteria that we might use in making the judgment uh, of the, the preparation. First of all, looking at the finish of the walls and margins of the preparation, general cavity uh, definition. There is, of course, a uh, direction of enamel rods here that we are at least paralleling those rods or to some degree, perhaps in the mesial and distal area, we're placing a slight taper on those walls, so we're good from that standpoint. We do uh, have a cable surface bevel uh, that is necessary and indeed is in position. We, we see the definition of it. From the retention standpoint, Retention uh, here should be both conspicuous visually and tactily. We're locking into this vantage point, at least in the occlusal area, in the cervical, mesial, and cervical distal position. Again, from this standpoint, with a very conservative preparation, the visual observation of retention may be somewhat difficult. We can move on then to the external outline form, we have included all of the area of carries and extension of the, the fissure and removal of any contiguous fissure and decalcification. And then finally, the internal outline form, uh, we are extended into Denton. There is complete carries removal, and we've attempted to maintain uh, merely a conservative loss of tooth tissue, no excessive tissue loss. So we're ready then to move on to the area of condensation. Condensation now is going to begin using the small pellet of, of foil. This is a pellet that's about a number 128th size. We'll place one into the cervical area and begin to condense that with the use of the cow horn gold foil condensers, just using hand pressure at this moment to bring the foil to position. Now across the cervical floor, I'm going to also place one up into the axial uh, wall in the occlusal area. Again, using hand condensation to do this to get the material to place. This is, again, the fibrous gold foil that has been cut from the rope. It has been annealed then in the alcohol flame and laid into position. And now I'm going to begin condensation into these vantage points Again, using the malleting type of blow, uh, stepping the condenser, locking into the area at the distal, then across the cervical floor. Into the mesial retentive or vantage point. Once we're locked into that area, we move on up and lock then into the occlusal. Again, keeping in mind, once we get this condensation completed and we're assured of a lock of the material into this axial wall, against the axial wall and into the retentive areas, we can then continue to build the foil uh, working against the wall portion, keeping the building of the foil 
in the lateral area, keeping a depressed axial wall. So we'll just carry on with additional pieces of, of material now, uh, using that kind of a pattern in order to gain the proper condensation in order to fulfill really the objectives of condensation. So with another piece placed, we'll carry on with our balloting and then continue with successive pieces of foil that are being uh, added and continue building the restoration. The contour now is essentially complete. Uh, we're placing what we believe will be the last piece of foil to fill in the void that uh, has existed in the central portion all the way along the building of the material. We've attempted as the contouring has taken place to remove any gross excesses beyond the margins by a portion of the melting blow very lightly and at an appropriate angle to do this. We want to make sure that we are well condensed uh, and that we do have the contour established. And once we reach this stage, then we're at a point where the developing of the contour and the polishing can take place. We're using a 5S burnisher then to take away some of the loose bit of material on the surface and to burnish down margins. This is really, in essence, a continuation of condensation on this surface area. Once we have that surface worked over well, we'll move in then to a low speed instrumentation using a carrot shaped green stone to, to bring about some margination uh, of the cohesive foil. With this stone now rotating appropriately from restoration or restorative material to margins, bring about the removal of this slight excess, the fusel area first, then working down to the cervical area, stopping and rotating the stone now in the opposite direction to work on the distal aspect. If there is gross excess of material that has been placed, then this becomes much more of a problem to remove this excess contour. We have this work now to a point where we can now think do just a bit more on this mesial surface at the occlusal. We want to keep in mind what our original outline form was. Then let's move into the use of a flame shaped finishing burr, the number zero. We're using this instrument because of its very small size. It can fit conveniently into the groove that lies just above the restoration. We'll set the instrument into this area first, follow that groove on down to create a, an extension uh, of the natural groove into the restoration and also to clear away the excess material at that point. And again, with the instrument rotating now towards the mesial, rotating from foil to tooth tissue, we'll carry out some further contouring from that groove position. And stopping and rotating, then again back into a direction towards the distal. This seems to have the contour that we want generally in that area. Now uh, we'll move into the use of a series of paper abrasive discs, the medium cuddle first. We have a contour here that we, we like uh, in general. 
so that we will take that contour, or take the, the disc rather, and we'll be rotating it uh, against the back end of an instrument to kind of flex that disc in order to get in to have the disc itself hug the contour that we have imposed on the restoration. Doing the mesial segment first, from mesial margin down to groove, changing the rotation as we get to this cervical margin, then switching around and making the entrance from the, against the distal incline of the restoration, letting the disc carry over the contour of the distal aspect, first in the cervical area, again we'll change the rotation of the disc, moving on up into the occlusal aspect. Now we'll carry through to a fine cuddle and a crocus disc uh, and carry on with our contouring and finishing procedure. We're completing now the polishing, having gone through medium and fine cuddle. Now using the crocus disc, see it on this mesial aspect, and then from the distal. And we'll now just cleanse the preparation with some air and uh, now carefully we'll view this area. As we review the criteria for the finished restoration, we look first at the surface which should be smooth and should be well polished and we see the restoration does have a high finish to it, it is smooth, it is well polished. Secondly, as we look at the margins, the margin integrity, there should be no evidence of a crevice along the margin and a margin not detectable with an explorer. Again, the restoration as we move from the tooth down to the restoration, across the buckle groove and then out on the margins of the restoration, these are not detectable. Thirdly, the anatomy and contour. Here we're not concerned particularly with the cuspal planes. Uh, we aren't concerned really at all with the functional occlusal contact. We are, however, concerned with the axial contour of the tooth. As we view this, there is a continuity to the buckle uh, cusp as they move into the buckle groove. This is continuous in anatomic form. So we have met the criteria for the evaluation of the class one gold foil buckle pit on lower molar. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.